Ethernet Ring Protection Switching ERPS, also called a G.8032, is a protocol defined by the International Telecommunication Union Telecommunication Standardization Sector ITU -T, to eliminate loops at layer 2. It does this by blocking the RPL owner port on ERPS rings. Compared with STP, RRPP, and SEP, ERPS provides faster convergence, better interoperability with non-Huawei devices, and multiple networking modes, such as single-ring or multi-ring networking. However, ERPS is more complex to configure and requires the network topology to be planned in advance. An ERPS ring consists of interconnected Layer 2 switching devices configured with the same control VLAN. A control VLAN is configured in an ERPS ring to transmit RAPS PDUs. RAPS PDUs and data packets are transmitted separately, improving ERPS security. In an ERPS ring, the RPL owner port is blocked and cannot forward user traffic thereby ensuring that no loop occurs. If a link on the network is faulty, the ERPS protection switching mechanism blocks the ports at both ends of the faulty link. After receiving an RAPS PDU indicating a link or node fault in an ERPS ring, the node on which the RPL owner port resides unblocks the RPL owner port. The RPL owner port can then send and receive traffic to ensure non-stop traffic forwarding. When the fault is rectified, you can configure whether to switch traffic back to the original link as required. Currently, ERPS has two versions, ERPS v1 and ERPS v2. ERPS v2 is fully compatible with ERPS v1 and introduces the RPL neighbor port and sub-ring concepts. An RPL neighbor port is directly connected to an RPL owner port and is blocked or unblocked together with the RPL owner port. This reduces the number of FDP entry updates on the device where the RPL neighbor port resides. An ERPS ring can be a major ring or a subring. A major ring forms a closed ring, whereas a subring connects to a major ring but does not form a closed ring itself. A subring has its own RPL owner port and RPL neighbor port. The virtual channel and non-virtual channel can be used to transmit RAPS PDUs and subrings, depending on whether they are transmitted to the major ring. In a multi-ring scenario, both the major ring and subrings block their own RPL owner ports to prevent loops in each ring. If a link is faulty, the ring where the faulty link resides blocks the ports at both ends of this link. The RPL owner and RPL neighbor ports are unblocked to ensure normal traffic transmission. When the fault is rectified, you can configure whether to switch traffic back to the original link as required. Now, let's dive deeper into how to configure ERPS. On a single ring network, switch A, B, C, and D implement service aggregation at layer 2 and process layer 3 services. ERPS is used on the ring network to provide protection switching for layer 2 redundant links. Configure two ERP instances, namely ERP Instance 1 and ERP Instance 2 on switch A, B, C, and D. ERP Instance 1 is used for ERPS Ring 1 to eliminate loops for VLANs, 100 to 200. ERP Instance 2 is used for ERPS Ring 2 to eliminate loops for VLANs, 300 to 400. In ERPS, the VLAN in which RAPS PDUs and data packets are transmitted must be mapped to an ERP instance so that ERPS forwards or blocks the packets based on configured rules. If the mapping is not configured, broadcast storms may occur on the ring network. On this network, P1 on switch B is a blocked port in ERPS ring 1, and P2 on switch A is a blocked port in ERPS ring 2. This implements load balancing and link backup. The detailed configuration procedure is as follows. First, configure the link type of all ports to be added to ERPS rings as trunk. The ERPS port must allow packets in the control VLAN and packets in the data VLAN. Therefore, the port must be configured as a trunk or hybrid port. Second, create ERPS ring 1 and ERPS ring 2 on all switches on the ring network. 
configure control VLANs and ERP instances in the ERPS rings and map VLANs to the ERP instances. For example, configure ERPS ring 1 and set the control VLAN ID to 10 on switch A to transmit RAPS PDUs. Then create ERP instance 1 in ERPS ring 1 to transmit data packets from VLANs 100 to 200. Similarly, create ERPS ring 2, set the control VLAN ID to 20, and create ERP instance 2 to transmit data packets from VLANs 300 to 400. Third, add layer 2 ports to ERPS rings and specify port roles. Here we use switch A as an example. Disable STP and GE001. Note that STP, RRPP, and SCP, and SmartLink cannot be enabled on a Layer 2 interface in an ERPS ring. Then run the ERPS Ring 1 and ERPS Ring 2 commands to add the port to both ERPS Ring 1 and ERPS Ring 2. In addition, configure the port as the RPL owner port in ERPS Ring 2 according to the network plan. The configurations on other devices are similar to those on Switch A. Fourth, configure Layer 2 forwarding on Switch A, B, C, and D. That is, create the corresponding data VLANs on each switch and add the ports to each data VLAN. After a port is added to an ERPS ring configured with the control VLAN, the port is added to the control VLAN automatically. After the configuration is complete, run the display ERPS command to check whether the ERPS rings are successfully created. Here we use switch A as an example. In the command output, two ERPS rings, ERPS ring 1 and ERPS ring 2 are created on switch A, and their control VLANs are VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 respectively. GE001 is in ERPS ring 2 and is the RPL owner port. This port has been blocked to prevent loops. You can also run the display ERPS verbose command to view detailed information about ERPS rings and ports in a ring. The preceding is the configuration of ERPS multi-instance. In addition, to prevent network flapping and reduce the corresponding traffic interruptions after a link or node in an ERPS ring recovers from a failure, you can start timers in the ERPS ring. For more information about ERPS implementation and configurations, such as ERPS multi-ring networking and ERPS over VPLS, visit Huawei's technical support website or download the Huawei Enterprise Technical Support app.